What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video. Today we've got the Forsaken Finn guide. We'll be going from the Finn vestige point all the way up until we make it into Calrath, which will be the next guide we'll be pumping out. We'll be making our way through the entire game like this. But starting over from the Finn, we're actually going to be meeting up with a strange guy, but right after that we're rolling straight into a boss fight now. Don't be afraid, this one's not exactly the hardest boss fight in the game. Honestly, I'd, I'd say it's a bit easier than most. He's big, he's ugly, but very childlike and almost like a lobster. One claw, I guess one of those king crabs. One of those crabs that only has that one massive claw to just attack with. As you'll notice, his left arm's pretty much his only attacking point, and then he decides that he's gonna, I guess, run away and make you seem like you're supposed to chase him, and then he's gonna double back and flip onto his back. The rest of the time, it's just that one arm coming in close. Now, he will have that amoeba that you'll have to, uh, break with the lamp before that but for the most part the, the easiest thing that I found to do was lock on to the is it the right leg it's technically the left leg if you're looking at him from this angle don't do it onto his chest you know some of these bosses it's a bit easier to have the uh, you know center point with the lock on so you can see the entire character model I suppose but with this guy, I mean, you're really just wanting to close into his left side where that weak arm is. Or his right side. Ah, oh, goodness. You can see which leg we're talking about. I guess from your point, your perspective, no matter what, it's going to be a left leg, even though it's his right leg. God, it confuses me every time. But you'll notice it gets pretty easy. You're just going to be able to just swing away at that leg, keep trying to close in, look out for that arm, look out for those moments when he's just going to... I guess run away and then double back even though he doesn't quite do it all the time. You could even use throwables in this and if you're somebody that's a caster I imagine this fight just becomes very trivial. I mean look at him just rolling back onto his back again. No problems whatsoever. And that arm is very easily telegraphed. Pretty much every move he's got. I thought he was going to have a second phase but you know Big Ugly is just Big Ugly. Giant child that we had to put down. And don't forget that Umbral Rift right after we're going to get the Remembrance out of that. I don't remember him having anything that was extremely worthwhile when it came to the boss units, but I still haven't even used any of the, uh, you call them, the Remembrances. I I've looked them over, but I I'm generally not the person that's going to go for some overpowered boss weapon. I'm looking for just a, a great sword strength build here, and uh, I'll tell you what, sometimes it feels like that hammer I've got right now, the throwable, is pretty much carrying it. But we got some fire salts over there. We may need those later on. We'll be going through the swamp zones now. It's a lot of uh, what I'd like to call zombies. But we'll be stopping over at our first vestige point over here of Baladi. Balad. I don't even know how to say it. We'll also be meeting up with that one guy that uh, looks very similar to the guy from Evil Dead. Or Army of Darkness, I should say. The guy, uh, what was it? Uh, the Scottish guy. I can't remember his name. Just reminds me of that. But before we start pushing forward across that bridge, we'll be walking through the swamp as there's one more item we need to pick up just around the bend, which will be some poison arrows. I don't think I looked this one up. Didn't even realize until later on since I'm not uh, a bowman or a ranged character, but each one of these arrows you find is actually a part of, similar to that of the throwables. Didn't even click together until way later. That each one of those is a, a specific item that you can utilize instead of just actually picking up a bundle of arrows. It's it's arrow types. So, if you're looking for something like that, for your builds all based around crossbows or bows, these can't be beneficial for you. But you will have to find the bolts as compared to the arrows if you're using the crossbow. You know, yada yada. Ridiculous differences. Even though I feel like an arrow most of the time should be as strong as a bolt. I guess it just doesn't fit in the same way. But I am no... Uh, sportsman, I suppose, in that category. So I wouldn't know the real difference. But going forward, we will have this, uh, what was it, the Angel's Axe. A weapon previously used by the Angel of Void, which we also will be seeing the armor set for that a little bit later on. But we'll be finding that over in this little uh, lake bed over here. And like I said before in the previous video, you know, you're going to have some moments where you're walking into some water. You never know how deep it is, so... Do be careful, but thankfully, we have a second life, and 
Thankfully, water disappears every time we go into the Umbral Realm, so we can't drown again. We'll have more than a few enemies inside of here that are pretty easy, in my opinion. Very easily telegraphed. A lot of them you basically just need to get up in their face. They've got javelins. Nine times out of ten, I, I never got hit by these guys. It was pretty simple, but we'll be moving over onto this uh, walkway over here. Opening the door as this will reconnect us with the vestige point that we just had previously. And now we'll be walking back and then going straight into Umbral right at this location as we need to head up this ladder over to our left. It's going to be in the Umbral. Head over to our right, I believe we're going to have a little bit more of that crafting material for weapon upgrades, which find quite a bit of this all over the place. Like, uh, I do believe they really want you to kind of play around with a lot of different weapons. Even before getting to the end game point, you can get some of these weapons all the way leveled up. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty nice. You know, they said there was better. Now uh, there's also a bigger boy over here. Do you keep in mind that over hiding behind that uh, wooden structure or barricade? We've got the mace wielder, which is pretty easy to deal with. And you notice that hammer is just taking care of business all the time. We'll be able to come back out of Umbra over there on the right. But I believe they've uh, they've made a, a wide selection of weapons, and they really want you to have. A huge amount of build diversity in this game, which is really nice as compared to Liza P, where it was it was a cool feature to have the handles and blades detachable and creating different styles of weapons with different uh, blades based on the handle being the movement style. It, it was an interesting system, but I, I thoroughly enjoy having a huge amount of build diversity. I probably will be looking into more than a few builds, maybe even just trying to beat the game with the broken bucket. See if I can upgrade that to a point and you know mix and match that with something else. But heading down over here, we'll also have a little bit of hidden room. Keep that uh, lamp at the ready with some of those metal bars or certain doorways. They always seem to open up. I believe we're going to get a ring out of this one. No, it's going to be an amulet. And that one is... I can't read it right now. I can't remember. Hold on. That's right. This necklace is actually extremely powerful for casters as it's one that just amplifies damage per spell that you'll be casting and it can be one of those that if you utilize different types of spells in combination will further additionally increase that damage. Like I said before, or like I was saying a few moments ago, there's a plethora of weapons but there's also a plethora of different attributes from rings to weapons and then later on we'll actually have sockets that further increases this capacity to what we can actually do with our builds. It's pretty in-depth and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Now, sadly enough, I, I believe a lot of this will more than likely get kind of filtered out as it's just such a huge amount that most people just won't be uh, playing around with multiple playthroughs. But it, it's nice to have that capability of going in a new game plus and really having a whole slew of different options to kind of just mix and match at your free will, especially once you're capable of respecting your character. As if you don't know how to get that done, you'll need to uh, go to the Umbral Guy old mole back there at the Sky Ridge, buy up the... I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's one of those... It starts with a C or something. If you go over to Pieta, she'll have the name of the thing you'll need in order to get that done, and you'll just be able to buy that over there with some of the scouring, the little shrimpies that you keep getting from some of those umbral rifts and then be able to kind of just work with whatever you would like after that. Now just below here we will need to uh, attack these vines. You'll notice these in a few spots where we'll be able to break those open. I believe this one's another. This might have been a ring right here. Yep, and that's going to be the one that gives us strength and agility attributes increase. Curse worm. Then just over there we'll get a little cosmetic but a couple of these moments, oh, also, yes, we've got a woman trapped in, or encased in stone at this point from an amulet that she's wearing. You will need a specific grenade, the Holy Grenade, the Empyrean Grenade. We'll need to equip that. If you don't know where that is, go to my previous video, with the Pilgrim's Perch Guide. If you look in the description, the name will be down in the bottom, or in the description, with a timestamp of where the item is if you need that. But we'll need to equip that and throw that onto her. Then we'll get the, oh, what's the name of Pendant that gives us potentially a, a massive amount of physical damage reduction. It's more one of those uh, protective ones. 
But if you leave and go back to the vestige point, rest up, she will leave and she will be back at the Skyrest Bridge. She'll actually be somebody that we can hire in for boss fights later on to fight with us. We'll actually have to pay her though. But just behind her is the catalyst that is for and this will be pretty good for some of those Radiant players, especially early on. It looks like something that could give you a little bit more of that uh, power based on your Radiance that you have leveled up. Since it is, uh, what is it, C+. Plus. And you can further increase that a little bit later on. Like I said before, you know, some of those moments you never know how deep that water is. And I should have known previously, but earlier I thought this section over here was just uh, you know, dried up. Wasn't much of a swamp over here. But we'll be needing to go go into Umbral anyway, as we just need to get into the bottom of this uh, lake bed, if you will, pond. And then walking up to this top point, we will be getting a new throwable. This is going to be a poison javelin. Not too bad. I haven't used it myself. I thought about making a whole build on throwables, as there's a multitude of things that further increase their damage overall. And, I mean, they seem pretty devastating. I don't know how many ammo pouches you can really have at any time. I mean, whew, I wonder if you could beat the whole game with just throwables. That'd be a, a powerful playstyle right there. Also got another throwable over here, the Umbral Burrower. Like a little larva, exploding larva, if you will. Oh, and the, ooh, I'll tell you what's the most frustrating thing is these roly-polies that keep rolling everywhere, just spitting out that poison gas. Absolutely frustrating. But heading over here, popping that stomach, we're going to be getting, what was it again? Ah, yes, another crafting material for upgrading our healing potions. Can't get enough of those. Oh, I, I think I'm already up to seven by this point in the game, and uh, yeah, it's still not enough. There's certain moments where I, I'm just sucking it down for no reason. But heading over here, we'll be getting another uh, smite cure, I believe that one is. Or holy cure, one of those potions. But doubling right on back up. Already uh, gathered everything from this location, I believe, at this point. And we'll be moving forward. We'll actually be hitting a fork in the road, and we'll be going over to the right before we head into that left uh, structure over there. We will want to go into Umbral for this location. Actually, I actually had to double back for this one. First playthrough, I just went straight to the left, and it just meets up with the boss fight immediately. You'll notice more of those vines over here that we'll be needing to cut down and then push forward. And then in both the left and right direction, we will need to go into Umbral as it is uh, some pretty deep water. But on the left, we'll be able to cut through those vines. And then over to our right, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, both sides are going to be some deep water. But heading over to the left first, we've got another one of those stomachs to pop. And at this one, we'll be getting another one of those rings. Let's see what this one was going to be. That's right, we get a little bit more of that poison resistance off that ring. Typically, a lot of these resistance rings, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not wearing them. Promise you, I'm just going to look for uh, resistance from gear more than I'm ever going to get it from uh, a ring. Sometimes it may be a little bit beneficial for you, especially if you're in certain boss fights, if there's just like heavy specific poison. So I'm, more along the lines, if you're probably something that uh, doesn't have the capability of dodging more or less, or just has terrible armor, that may be the uh, beneficial factor. But for me, it's all about the damage. And over here, we will have more than a few things to... Uh, traps waiting for us it's a bit frustrating so do keep that in mind especially if you're on low health but heading over into this section over to our right we want to knock down this ladder as in this next zone door over here on our left we'll have a little bit of a bigger boy fight we'll have uh, this fat boy that sadly enough i ended up dying because i didn't have any healing potions the amount of times that's happened is uh unreal especially against some of these easier bosses you notice this guy we can't hit him from the front until he opens up his face so you kind of just have to dodge wait for those moments and when he opens up his face that's when it's time to just use your throwables even if you're a melee player you don't exactly want to get in close whenever he's just spitting it from his face the rest of the time you'll able to just dodge some of those moves and then head up behind him a lot of times i was only able to get like one strike in at a time because there's a weird hitbox moment where it just feels like it, you know, from the point of where you're locked in, it just feels like you start hitting his side instead of his back. There's a couple of moments where that'll, it seems like it should connect, but then it's still, I guess the way that the weapon's swinging, it just ends up hitting his face and it's like an armor hit, so it only does like 20 damage. A little bit frustrating, but it's a pretty easy boss fight. Then over on our left, we need to soul play this character and over to 
order to open up this next area and give us access to beating down this, uh, I don't even want to call it what I want to call it. Or YouTube wouldn't be too happy. But, you know, it's just spitting that, uh, white foam at you, if you will. Ugh, it's just a spitter. Ain't nobody like that. But moving on, over in this left location, a little hut over here, we'll be able to break out of the umbral as well as grabbing up a little bit more of that crafting material towards upgrading our weapon. And there will be one more item that we'll be able to grab up at the very back of this inside of a little hut. There will be some roly polies, so do be uh, careful inside there. A lot of that poison smoke in there. But all we'll be getting is a little bit of that, um, uh, some type of potion. I can't remember specifically what it, what the uh, type was. But now we'll be able to head back over to the vestige point, rest up, and then we'll be moving towards that left alleyway that we passed up earlier. Just kind of showcasing the route that we're taking, making sure that everybody can follow along easily and uh, know where we're at instead of just, you know, cutting straight back to that fork on the road. Sometimes you forget where you're at, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. Try to make it as linear as possible. But we'll be moving back over into the area but we won't have to go into Umbral this time. I would suggest not going in within Umbral. Just makes life a little bit easier. Or at least for now. But we will end up being in Umbral. And we, that's probably one of the biggest reasons you don't want to be in Umbral already. Is that the longer you're in it, the more dangerous it's going to get. And the more frustrating it's going to be. But there's going to be quite a few of those roly polies over here. A couple of little zombies coming out of the water. But over here we'll get a little bit of that crafting material. And more than a few of those skulls to give us a little bit more of that vigor. Actually, I can't remember the last time I even popped one of those skulls. I haven't used them in quite a while. I probably have a massive stack of them. I'm probably missing out on more than a few levels from holding them on. But over here, you could drop down a vestige seed if you want. I wouldn't necessarily do it. We're still pretty close to the vestige point behind us, and it's pretty easy to run over to this section, so saving that wouldn't be a problem. Might want to use it a little bit later on, and I'll showcase where that point is here coming up in the future. But we need to go into Umbral in order to access one of these points in order to open this door over here on our left, sadly enough. Can't get the one on the far left, but just going in from that door. Over to our right, we will find a new grenade that's going to be one that's a poison buildup. And then pushing forward, get a little bit of uh, wither salts over here. And then over to our left, we're going to have another one of those moths to deal with. Goodness, they are absolutely frustrating, especially when they close you in with those husks. It can be absolutely devastating. But taking down that moth, we do have another stomach behind there to pop. Pulling that open. Let's see what we have off of this one from last time. That's right, we're getting a number, another umbral eye that we can socket into our, uh, our lamp. Well, ooh, man. Yeah, just kind of earful of my own voice here for a second. I have to mute myself every time I uh, do these voiceovers. I can't stand listening. It's absolutely frustrating. Sometimes it could probably be detrimental to me, but uh, moving on through here, we're going to need to uh, pop more than a few of those amoebas that are protecting some of these guys around this location. Sadly enough, we're not getting too much out of some of these huts. If I, it, it looks like they should be secrets, but then it's effectively we're just kind of getting some small fry stuff or just a couple of enemies locked behind there. Moving across the uh, wooden walkways that they've uh, developed over here, we'll get a Pyrrhic cultist staff and a little bit of that Pyrrhic armor along with that. Not the biggest fan of it, but could be beneficial for some of those players out there that are looking for a little more fire damage. But pushing on forward, we got a lot more of those roly polies to deal with, and over here we will need to. Head over to kick down this bridge real quick, and then we'll need to drop down into the area just below us as there's a little bit of a secret chest down here. Now we will also need to pop or soul play some of these just in order to exit this area and make it back up top as we're completely closed in over here. But heading from that door over to our left, we're going to be finding our chest that's going to have the Angel of the Void armor set, which I actually really liked the look of this armor set, but... You know, the helmet was just not enough armor for me, not enough resistances. That cone head is just, uh, it's, it's really hitting the right spot, and I haven't found anything yet that I've actually wanted to replace it with. I think the only thing that actually had more armor than this one was uh, the spiky head one from the spiky head guys at the Pilgrim's Perch. But I, I just, I like the cone head better. The look, 
fits more and it's got better resistances on it. The cost of the physical damage reduction is just not enough for me to actually want to change it. Now over here on our right, we will need to jump back into the Umbral. You notice we just ran away from that Red Eye Reaper. If you can kill that guy, you will get an Umbral Eye from him. If you didn't know that, it's actually a pretty powerful one. Apparently all things in the Umbral will cower before you if you have that Umbral Eye socketed or something. But over here, just inside of that hut, we will have another spell, which is going to give us basically like a poison gas field, AoE spell type of uh, effect. Then we'll be able to come out of Umbral over here on our left. Using that hammer to just knock them out. But that spell is going to be the number one thing that we came over here for. And then we'll be pushing forward and we'll actually be walking into a boss fight over here. Now just up ahead over to our right, there is a flower bed if you'd like to put a vestige seed down right there you know you can without having to you know constantly run back you may die to this one a few times i definitely did trying to get the mechanics down on this uh horseman was a a little bit irritating but it really didn't take me long it's actually a bit of an easy fight i think the hardest thing is trying to just focus on where he's going to be but even that is kind of nicely telegraphed Typically, if you're a melee player like me, you're going to be playing a little bit of a waiting game. Ranged players or spellcasters may have a little bit easier time with this fight, but he does jump off his horse and we can get some, you know, one-on-one -on -one action going, but he will disappear more than a few times. Go back to the horse and you're just going to be looking for that cloud or that puddle mist that's coming up. Typically, it's pretty easy to actually uh, dodge his little side sweep. One of the hardest things for more than a few players is actually this one move where it echoes outward with that damage. Getting the timing right on that dodge can be a little bit confusing, but as soon as you start to notice that it's one of those moments where as long as uh, you dodge right as it's about to touch you, should be good. Thankfully, the dodge timing in this game is feels pretty nice, and a lot of times it's like any souls, like you know, if you dodge it perfectly, even if it does touch you, Boom, you're out of that damage zone. And similar to with him jumping off and then trying to spear you, as you'll notice, it does get a bit frustrating that he just keeps running off onto that horse. Now, you can knock him off the horse if you want to go into Umbral. You'll notice there's a lot of those little amoebas kind of sitting around. You can kind of use your throwable to lock onto one of those or utilize the lamp in order to pop some of those and then knock him off. I didn't choose this method as it felt a little bit more difficult for me it left me prone to getting attacked more uh, you know left me in a, a moment where i'm stuck in an animation and i can't dodge in certain moments especially if it missed so sometimes playing the waiting game just dodging the moves that he has is going to be your best bet when it comes to a fight like this especially for a melee player if you're ranged more than likely you're going to be able to knock this guy off a little bit easier you could possibly try to uh Utilize your throwables as a melee player in order to try and knock him off. But again, that was another one of those moments where I just didn't want to be stuck in an animation. And you'll notice as we're getting closer to the halfway health bar, he does kind of play a little bit different. He starts to decide to be a bit more in your face. You'll notice his uh, halibird is upgraded. He's got a bit more of those poison vines on it. And he'll start to get a little bit more aggro with you outside of just using his horse. And you will notice that he will have moments where now he has a bit of an AOE attack and a much larger halibird that can be extremely frustrating. So he'll start slashing, he'll start using his shield. Thankfully, it's not too hard, and he will have his AOE move at the same point that echoes outward. So do be on the lookout every time that you see that shield going up. You know, just know it's either going to be the one that echoes out or it's going to be the one that, uh, does that little viney attack outward and each one of his halibird attacks will do that as well as well as him calling in the horse which is another one of those moves so you've got three different types of shield drops where it's either you're looking at the horse coming out you're either looking at the echoes or you're looking at that veins or vines sprinkling out can be a little bit frustrating 
for the most part, as long as you can get in right after one of those attack, do a couple of attacks, or just get some charged attacks in there. That's what I was going for, was just trying to make sure that I kept getting those one strikes in like that, block outward. You notice at that moment, I got really close to just dying because I got too close with him doing that echoes. But you'll notice with the echoes one, he'll hold it up and have like that white circle of like force coming into his shield. If he's doing the horse one, he'll beat his chest twice. I can't remember what the telegraph was for the one where he drops it down and the vines come out. But essentially, those are the things that you'll be looking for. The number one scariest one is obviously going to be the one where he holds it up and has that charge for that echo out. But don't forget to grab up that umbral rift after you've defeated him and head over to the portal as you do want to grab up that remembrance. But this will be the first portal that we'll be cleansing. No longer do we have the uh, you know, beacon calling for a deer. Goodness, that name every time. Uh, I just think of a deer, a literal deer. <laughs> but heading on to the path just beyond, uh, or just opposite of that uh, beam of light, we'll have another umbral rift that we'll need to grab up just before that and... Right after that, we'll be talking with a strange guy on the ground who will be another vendor, and we'll get the vestige point of the Pale Butcher. But moving forward from that point, we'll be heading over to our left, and do be careful, there is quite a few of those roly-polies over here that are spitting out all that gas. It is uh, quite ridiculous how many there are, and they are extremely frustrating to me. I can just hear them every time. They've got that loud rolling sound. But just in front, we've got this person that we'll need to knock down, and we'll get a ring that gives us an increase to Inferno and Radiance. So some of those spellcasters out there, that's definitely going to be a ring you want to stop by and grab up before moving forward. The rest of, uh, oh, be careful over here as there is an angler loot. Be keeping an eye on those flames, but over here on our right, a little bit more of that, uh, those healing rocks that we can eat. I believe it's somewhere over here on the right. There's, I'm telling you, there's more than a few times, especially later in this video, where these angler loots are... Uh, they're more prevalent. They're in a lot of different locations, and they can really be uh, some time wasters, if not being more irritating. But you notice how that one dances, that flicker, the way that it moves, as uh, it just has a more living motion to it than some of the other flames of the other loot, because they will move slightly. Oh, I'm telling you, I got, I got trust issues with some of these loot now. So I'll just... I'm that loot fiend, man. I'll just run over to it, and I'll grab it as quick as possible, and oh, man, it is... Uh, it's a painful experience. But heading forward, we'll have a couple of things to grab up over here before we start heading on, as we'll be heading over to Fitzroy right after this. But over to our left, we'll be able to push down this ladder, just connecting both of these locations. Honestly, we, we don't really need it, since we already have the vestige point over to our left, but it gives us a little bit more accessibility, I believe. Right there, we'll have some projectile arrows giving us a little bit more of that physical damage, or were they precision? I can't, I can't remember the name of it specifically. Got that, what is it? That's like, I think the video player's playing back at 360 right now, so I don't have any lag. Ah, so much nicer. But heading up over here, we will actually have another chest to grab up just behind these boxes over here. Could easily miss this one. And that's going to have, what was it? Ah, another amulet. And this one's going to give us more damage based on the different inflictions that we have. So if we're causing, bleh, causing fire, poison, wither, you know, or holy, each one of those is additionally going to stack up more damage. So if you got something of a spellcaster, or some type of mix between spellcaster and melee build, where you're working with a couple of different uh, damage types, could be one of those necklaces that could really amplify your damage. But heading forward, we've got to head over to our left. It's a little bit winding over here, even though everything's just kind of basically right on top of each other. But we'll be able to knock down this bridge over here, connecting us with the vestige point. From that point, we'll need to head over to the right, go back to the uh, location we were just before, and then head up to the top as there's one more item that we'll need to grab up over here. It's going to be a little bit more of that crafting material for weapon upgrades. You just can't have enough of those, trust me. Trying to find every single one of those is well worth your time, even though you can't actually buy quite a bit of them from the uh, blacksmith. It almost seems like there's an infinite supply. But who wants to pay for that when they could pay for more level ups? You know? But now we'll be heading over into Fitzroy's Gorge, I believe. 
can't remember the name specifically, but as we're coming up to a fork in the road over here, we will be heading over to our left as this is actually going to connect us back to the Skyrest Bridge of a little bit of a boss fight over here. You may have already fought off with one of the knights that we'll be facing off, or the boss specifically. It's not too hard of a fight, but it will give us a little bit more of that crafting material for our weapon at the end of it. And actually, there's a really solid weapon over here. I can't forget that. Can't worry. Can't forget to mention that. But over to our right, we'll have another one of those holy healer guys. I just, I cannot stand these knights. They are absolutely frustrating. I mean, the capability of this guy being able to not only clone himself, but heal himself, heal other people around him as well, has massive amounts of damage with any one of his swings. Like, if you're not dodging these, it, it can be pretty devastating. Or if you don't have, like, a I guess decent smite protection would be the uh, resistance you're looking for with this guy. It can be explosive. You'll notice with each one of these swings, thankfully, this boss unit is much easier to deal with than some of those in Pilgrim Purge where it's like you're under leveled. But now he's going for the healing. Really frustrating. I decided to go for the method of using the soul flay in moments like that so i could pull him out of it because every time he does the healing effect he's in full block mode anytime you attack him he'll immediately counter with a different attack you'll have to dodge that and then attack him again it seems to be a bit easier though to get the soul flay done as he's not going to attack when he's healing himself now you'll notice he doesn't even have the capability of uh, utilizing his smite damage we'll be able to quickly finish him off sinner judged and we'll be getting a ring that gives us more smite resistance, or holy resistance, I can't remember which one of the two. And over here on the lift is actually going to be the lift that takes us all the way up to that one door that I had in the Pilgrim's Purge video that I just wasn't sure about. I knew, I knew it was going to be one of those doors where you just had to progress to a different location. Still not really certain why they did it that way, but, you know, I... I guess it's just to kind of connect each one of the different areas. It's nice, but I see no reason to even go back up through that. But over here on our right is the real gem that we'll be getting out of here, which is Bloodlust. This one not only is going to have fire damage and bleed damage associated with it, but every time that we kill an enemy, while we have that weapon equipped, we will regain health. I, I think that is absolutely... Uh, a power play for any type of build that maybe is using one sword and a catalyst. If you're like a spellcaster with that, you could just be doubling up on your damage, making sure that you're getting health back for every kill that you've got. You've got bleed and fire from that at the same time, and then you could use holy with that or umbral. I feel like it could just be an absolute power play. Over here on our left, we will have another one of those umbral riffs so we can get some more of those little shrimpies and never have enough of those scourings. And then heading forward, we will have some explosive dogs and a lot of a lot of fire damage coming up as we're pushing closer and closer to Cal Wrath. We also now have a fire archer that's a snake woman, or at least I believe it's a snake woman. Really frustrating. They can actually have a mortar barrage from that archer, and uh, whew, man, when we get into Cal Wrath or Cal Wrath, it's devastating. Any time you face off of them, I'm. They're, they're more deadly than some of those archers that we already faced with on uh, Pilgrim's Birch. But over here on the right, we'll get a little bit more of that crafting material for our weapons. And pushing inward, we'll have another one of those archers over to our left and those gremlins. God, I hate them. Mm, man, they are frustrating, those little gremlins. Going forward, though, we'll be heading up over to our right. We'll have a little bit more. Ah, that's right. We'll have another ring over here on our right. Do be careful, though. There are more than a few enemies waiting just around the corner just to attack you. We've got three of those uh, hounds and one of the double axe wielders. I forget what the ring was all about. Hold on. That's right. The ring is going to be one that gives us the capability of using radiant spells with a non-radiant catalyst. And we'll also get Fitzroy's sword over there that has that hundred bleed on it. Not too bad of a weapon. Looks like a type... Type of great sword. I'm not sure if I'm going to trade over to it. Some of these uh, weapons just aren't pairing up to the thorned. Oh, there it is again. Oh, man. Mm. 
even watching that back's frustrating, but do be on the lookout. There's more than a few of those angler loots out here. It, it, man, that's frustrating. That thorned crimson uh, rector sword, I, I've leveled it up to max at this point, and so far nothing seems like it's going to be doing me any more justice than what I've got with this right now. I'm not really looking for status effect. I'm just looking for a solid amount of damage, maybe a little bit of that bleed. But I, I don't think I'm going to trade over until I get closer to the end, if not into New Game Plus where I try a different build where I'm really starting to work with that. Right now it's just all about being a tank and a massive amount of damage with one sword. Just under here, we'll be finding more than a few of the crafting material, but we'll need to head all the way back up as there's going to be one path over to our left that we'll need to head down where we'll find a, what looks like a dwarven miner over here, and he'll be talking about his brother or something along those lines. And just down from that, we'll actually have a flower bed where I would highly suggest dropping one of your vestige seeds on this point as we're about to walk into another boss fight. This next boss fight can be a bit frustrating, and just below that we will find a ruined tablet that we'll need for the blacksmith. This will give us the capability of applying sockets to our weapons, or filling sockets in our weapons as we upgrade those weapons. Over here on this bridge we're going to have a magma, like axe, shield, almost looks like a minotaur in a way, like a demonic minotaur. But he's all about the magma and the fire, so do be careful with this one. If you've got fire-resistant items, this would be a good time to pop them on. He's not the most devastating uh, boss that you'll face off with, and this is definitely another one of those moments where it's kind of like we're facing off with him as a boss right now, but he'll be a regular unit as we go through Cal Wrath. But one thing to note about this fight is that he can spawn in totems that will further empower him, so make sure that if you can... You know, try to get that totem down as quickly as possible, but do keep in mind like he's still going to be spitting that fire out. He's still going to have ranged fire attacks like that moment right there. If he can get that burn effect on you, it can be pretty devastating. You know, you'll notice how aggro he is in your face if you've already got that burning on you. It, it can be pretty devastating, and he'll leave those magma pools on the ground. Your best bet is to try to stay in close for a moment, dodge some of those swings that he has, kind of keep moving off to the left or the right of him, you know. Make sure that you're constantly circling the enemy. But then get a couple of strikes in, and I'll tell you what, he, he didn't have much of a health bar. He did kind of just roll over pretty easy, even though he had some massive damage, but we'll get his fire axe from him. And just after that center being judged, we have the capability of finding a little secret just at the other end of this bridge. We'll need to go down to this section and then soul flay this target over here, and this is how we'll get our next vestige point. And we'll actually get a shrine for a deer over here. So I, I believe this, I'm not 100% certain, but this might be one of those locations where you may be possibly capable of either altering the ending or just getting some more cosmetic stuff. It, it's one of the two. But heading across here, we'll need to move through the umbral. Over to our right, before we start heading forward, we will have one of those creatures to soul flay to open up the path in front of us and then we'll be heading up this ladder over here now we will have more than a few enemies before we get to this shrine so do be careful and make sure that you head all the way over to the right as you come off that ladder to drop this ladder over here that way just in case you made that seed or that vested seed over there and possibly you died going up this hill never know you won't have a, a long path to run around, and you won't have to go back through that secret underneath the bridge and all those jumps. You'll just need to run over here and be able to get out. But at the same time, this is also another way to uh, exit from this point after you get the vestige point. But up here is going to be the Shrine of a Deer. Do be careful. We've got some Flame Guard Dogs. And then over here, the Betrayed Iliard is going to be the vestige point that we'll have. And then we'll have the Shrine of a Deer over here on our right bit of an interesting shrine. Uh, I'm kind of liking the aesthetics of it, but over here we'll be able to take bloody hands as donation. I think we'll get those from using the charred fingers. You'll notice over here, really frustrating trying to walk on all these bodies and just get this item, but it's three charred fingers and just behind the shrine we will also have a uh, inferno spell, which I believe is almost like a beam or uh, I think it's like a fireball attack, something along those lines. I'm not sure. 100% because I haven't used any of the magic in this game. 
not typically one thing that I'd use. You know, in ARPGs, I'll do it all day, but Souls-like games, I just, I like the feel of that melee combat. It's just satisfying to me. Or I guess in an ARPG, it doesn't feel like I'm actually swinging, and you know, I'm just kind of clicking. I guess that's the difference. But over here on our left, you will notice that we have some stuff in the umbral, but this is more of a shortcut. We won't be using this right now. We'll actually be going around as this will be something that connects us to that point a little bit later on. And we'll get some weighted bolts just to the right from this hilltop. But if you do die going forward and you get to that point where we get to, uh, I'll, I'll explain once we get there how it becomes a shortcut. By the time we get up to that tower over to our left that's connecting in that point. But going down here, if you do make it into Umbral, it's going to be, whew, it's going to be a fun time. There's going to be a lot more enemies. We've got the Firewolves, we've got the Moth, we've got all these double dual wielding axe guys, and we've got that Flame Archer at the very bottom, and a couple of Reapers, so whew, really try to be careful going down this way, and do be sure to uh, keep yourself out of Umbral almost. But thankfully... As we're going through the content that's at the same level as ourselves, and there it is again, I swear. I, I even forgot about it. Do be on the lookout that there's more of those angler looters. I'm, hmm, man, trust me, that's not the last time either. I, I just see that loot. I, I'm getting trust issues at this point. I'm starting to look at it more. I'm starting to look at that flame flickering. Later than it. <laughs> but coming into this next zone, be careful. Make sure that you're well rested. I should have rested at the vestige point previous to going over into this location, but I think I, I ended up spending all of my healing potions before coming into this. We will be phasing off with the Light Reaper again, and do keep in mind that this is a one and done. I did not realize this. I thought I was going to be able to come back and fight this guy, but and I got him all the way to half health. Had I had health potions, I feel like I would have beat this guy in this moment. He's not actually that hard. He's got a couple of moves. He's a little bit faster than some of the other bosses we've already faced off with. I think they basically tried to make this guy just a little bit on that point of you need a, a bit of perfection with your dodges, your moves, and understanding the differences. Telegraph, you know, it's one of those that feels like a fight that's meant to be later on after you've developed those reaction times to a lot of the different things that you'll be fighting throughout the game. But I felt pretty comfortable with this one. I just did not have enough health. There's just no way. And yeah, there was more than a few moments where I just got caught up by some of his moves. You'll notice we're getting him close to halfway right now. If I just had a couple more health files, I mean, even just two of them, I probably could have got it done. And it just frustrates me to no end that I just cannot finish that guy off yet. I better just put him in the ground way later in this game. I can't wait till the next time I see him. But I got caught up in the Umbral before that. Everything that I had to fight before that moment, God, just irritates me because I don't even know what it drops. I want to know what it drops. I want the loot off it. I want the guy's skull up on my mantle. But moving forward, we have other loot to procure. And over here in front of us, we will have another one of those uh, snake archers. Uh, this one is absolutely frustrating because it has one of those amoebas protecting it, so you'll have to close in and make sure that you get that with the umbral lamp and then kill it. Could waste some good amount of health on that thing. But over here on the left, this is the tower that actually connects to be the shortcut. You don't want to go into umbral just yet. I would highly suggest going up to the top before going into umbral as there's a going to be no way to make it up to the top without being an umbral, but we will have one of those stomachs to pop right over here, which is going to be the umbral eye. This one's not bad. The main socket, it makes you immune for eight seconds after going into umbral. That's it's really not that bad. I kind of actually really like the concept of that. You'll notice that's why we can't make it all the way to the top, but over here on our left is where this ends up being a shortcut. We will also get a snake oil grenade up top here. Gives us a little bit more of that poison damage. But this will be the location where it'll end up being the shortcut. You'll notice we can't pull it across. It's only from one side, and then we'll drop down and be able to come back out from the umbral here. But now we'll head all the way up to the top, as there's one of the few pieces of loot to grab up up, up, up here. <laughs> My goodness. And somebody, I don't know who put that torch right there. That's the worst spot for a torch. I would be uh, 
I mean, I'd, I'd literally be melting because of the fact that I'm so close to the edge with how, how that fires right in my face. But over here we'll have the Axe of the Flayed, which has actually got a face on it. It looks pretty sick. I, I really like the concept of that axe. Might, might make a build around that a little bit later on, just for some fun. There's also a, a face shield, I think, as well. It's a couple of things where we could do some flayed skin type of build. Would be pretty interesting. But at the top, we'll need to go into Umbral as there's another Umbral Rift, and we will have a chest up top here that's going to give us the armor set for Fitzroy, I believe. Not the greatest armor set, but if you're looking for something that's a little bit of a, a medium build for armor and gives you uh, possibly closer to a, a light style movement, could be something worthwhile. But heading on down, we'll be able to head back in the other direction where we're going towards the graveyard. Sadly enough, we already used that umbral. That's why I said go to the top first. That way you don't have this moment where you're stuck in the umbral over here. And even if you were just back there, like uh, there is that little shrunken head voodoo doll so you could pop out before going in here as so you don't need it in this section right here. We'll need it in the section coming up behind that though. I seem to have somehow aggroed everything in this next zone as this uh, bigger boy the fat boy over there he's not going to be walking around down here if you just come down here on your own it, it's it's a bit confusing but there is so much down here if you come in with the umbral and there's nothing more frustrating than one of those spinners hitting you with that ranged attack and then next thing you know it's just a husk doing one strike after you've just had all that wither damage on you but you'll notice now coming back outside of the umbral, it's just a lot more clear. It's easier to move through. You don't feel like you're just claustrophobic, got everything attacking you. But we will have one of those flame knights up at the top. These guys are pretty easy. Most dangerous thing that they have is the spinning of their little fire shotgun bolt or whatever it is. Like they just have a projectile moment where it's constant spread of fire damage. That can be really frustrating. So do be careful being caught in that one, I would highly suggest just trying to get to some cover, just dodging it, avoiding that damage altogether. But we will have Fat Boy up here. He seems to have gotten stuck from me. Thankfully, he opened up his face, and that hammer just deals so much damage. It just takes things out. With a strength build, that hammer is absolutely devastating. We will get some healing or health crafting material right there. That saintly quintesson, quintessence, I believe the name is. And then coming around the corner, we'll walk out, and over to our left, we will have, I believe, now that's right, just a little skull over here, but this reconnects us with that other location where the uh, archer with the amoeba protecting it is. But then heading over to the right is where we're going to be pushing into our next zone. You'll notice we have another one of those flame knights, not too bad to deal with. He does get really irritating when he does that flame move flames on his sword and then he just does this spin attack over and over it's really frustrating it's just aggro in your face constantly but moving on from that point we won't be heading up into this building over here just yet we'll need to double back as there's an area just over to our right that we we'll need to head into there's some flame dogs over here so do be careful but there's a ring that we need to grab up before we start pushing into calrath itself and do keep in mind every time you heal one of those dogs it will be exploding but this ring will further increase our fire and wither damage so if you're doing a fire wither type of build could be a pretty powerful ring to throw in but then from this point we'll be heading up over to our right and going up this ladder i believe we'll be just around the corner from a vestige point at this time can't remember specifically this will be the last one over to our right we've got some loot which is going to be a hammer which i forgot to pop this one up but that one's directly on the main path. You'll be able to check it out. And then we'll be right into Lower Calrath. We will have a Umbral spot over here. Or Umbral Rift that we'll need to pop out. And we'll actually get a... Not just the Scouring, but something else. I can't remember. It's something of a talking point with the uh, Raiden character over at um, the Sky Rest Bridge. Goodness, I don't know why I was forgetting all those words all together. Over here on the right, though, a little bit of that uh, fire ward. And just up at the top, this will be the last vestige point that we'll be grabbing up for the video. This is going to be the end right here, guys. We're in Calrath now. And I'll be starting from this point, going all the way through Calrath, making that next guide. Hopefully either on the same day as the upload for this video, if not the next day for it. This is going to be a pretty interesting one. Calrath is pretty big. 
try to make sure to uh, cut it down as short as possible. But even Forsaken Finn ended up being a 50 minute video. It's kind of crazy. But hopefully this has been something that's helped you out. You know, if you'd like this content, hit that subscribe button. We got plenty more coming in the future. Hopefully some build guides as well. But at that same time, if you'd like to see some of this content live, streaming daily over to Twitch, hit that link down in the description below. But on that note, hopefully this has helped you out, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.